Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media Show, and Jeff Frick, general manager of our CUBE operation. Uh, Jeff, we're back here with more expertise around Cisco. Sean Donaldson, our next guest, CTO of Secure24. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me. So we didn't get the interview. Stu Miniman interviewed you at uh, VMworld. Absolutely. So virtualization obviously is hot. Um, vSphere, we cover that all day long. Um, but here at the show, it's Oracle, it's security, it's Cisco. Given the breaches this week, I mean, how do you feel? I mean, are you on top of this, uh, these recent security snafus? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So security is always a hot item, right? It's always a hot topic of conversation, and it's always something that we're we're very much looking at. You know, if you look at our name, our name's Secure Twenty Four, right? So it's it's very well established in our in our culture and in our uh, in our brain. And what what we're really looking at specifically with uh, 2015 is security moving past simply the technology aspects of it the firewalls, the DLP, the IPS, and all those technology capabilities and really going a lot more into the, the people in the process, right? Um, the capabilities from a, from a security perspective of, I'm going to uh, give you a Starbucks card if you give me your password, right? And working on the, the process around that and the people around that and the policy and the procedures in place to, to mitigate data breaches. So talk about how the landscape's changed since you were on in 2013, because that, that's a great example, and, and this security, the, the, the places where security, the war is fought, I guess, continue to change and evolve. So talk about how that has evolved since 2013, where is it today, and where do you think it's going next? Yeah, it, it continues It continues to evolve uh, up stack, right? So it, it's from the you know very traditional firewall that would simply be um, blocking, blocking internet ports and protocols, moving up stack into more of the application layer, application layer security, advanced persistent threats, different types of attacks, and then even moving farther than that into the, the people and the policy and the procedure, right? Social, uh, uh, social hacking, right? Uh, hacking by calling in and getting a password or username or access that you're not supposed to have. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because we talk about tech, people in process all the time, and we, I don't think people give enough uh, really thought about the people in the process, and it's interesting on the cloud and like an AWS perspective where someone will say, you know, your stuff might actually be more secure uh, in a cloud that's managed outside of your internal company because you don't have some of your internal company that might be disgruntled or whatever the reason is that are causing some of your security breaches, so it is really a multifaceted approach that you've got to take. Absolutely, this is kind of a good opportunity to take a step back and tell you a little bit about Secure24. So, Secure24, we specialize in critical application hosting, and a lot of that really focuses around, um, obviously, availability and performance from an application perspective, but security and compliancy as well. So as the, as the market evolves, and as there's uh, more and more compliancy requirements, just about every industry today has a variety of business requirements that revolve around their compliancy requirements, whether it's SOX, HIPAA, PCI, FTI, ITAR, and you can keep going down the list, but just about everyone today has, has those types of requirements, and that's really where we try to focus is that, that higher level of uh, compliancy and uh, process. But then, but if we go back the other direction to the lower level now, all the rage is Internet of Things, all these devices are going to be connected. Absolutely. Uh, it's all kind of data that's transferring back and forth, so you know, does it kind of shift the game back out to the edge on some of these other appliances? Because it looked like, I think it's something today that, you know, a printer is a PC that's unprotected. You know, what a great access point into your network. No, that's a great that's a great question. And I don't see it so much as I don't see it so much as shifting so much as I see it expanding, right? So that that technology, that network, that endpoint security, that mobile device management, those are gonna continue to still be hot topics and big areas of focus. I just see the 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 broader overall landscape expanding and really looking more and more into the, the people side of it, the process, the training, training resources, making sure there's good process in place to, to mitigate those things as well. Sean, talk about the, um, 
why UCS? Tell us why you're working with these guys. What are some of the things that impresses you about what Cisco's doing? Yeah, absolutely. So, as we were saying, as I was saying earlier, Secure24, we focus in hosting mission critical applications. So ERP systems that, that run a business, disaster recovery, business continuity, and those processes that go along with that. So we were actually one of the early adopters of Cisco UCS, and a lot of the reasons for it are around the ability to deploy quickly, the ability to manage a technical environment, and have a level of consistency across that environment. So UCS allows a lot of uh, API integration. So if you have various types of automation tools, various types of workflow management control tools, you can do a lot of API automation and integration. If you have multiple systems in a cluster, you can create a profile that controls all of those systems profile and I can guarantee across multiple physical servers that I have a, a consistent landscape. That I know the security of that landscape, I know the bio settings and all the, all the individual settings that you might do to customize and tune a machine. That's all captured in a profile and I can apply that then to multiple physical hosts. And I so, know... So, go ahead, sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, that's all right. So about Larry Ellison's vision of the cloud, what do you think of it? He did slam HANA, I don't know if you saw that keynote yesterday. Um, he said the quote, the quote Jeff was, HANA powers the cloud, he goes, what cloud? He was like pointing to, what clouds does SAP HANA um, support? I know you guys have worked with SAP, we love SAP, uh, obviously competitive jab there. Oh but yeah, you got absolutely. Oracle Cloud, you got Enterprise Cloud, you guys specialize in Enterprise Cloud. How do you talk to customers about making sense of it? I mean, Oracle's great for Oracle customers, but there's other clouds. Absolutely, so this is always an interesting topic of conversation, right? When you, there's a lot of different options out there. Cloud is a, is a very ambiguous word. And more and more, there's a lot of want and need for this, the hybrid cloud, the flexibility, but then the offset of the security, compliance, and control around that, right? So where we, where we really look at that is, yeah, focusing on that enterprise private cloud, focusing on that, that control and capabilities, but also always trying to look at how we can how we can utilize a, a public cloud in an efficient manner, right? How can I utilize a public cloud to be able to run particular types of workloads still in a secure and, and controlled manner? So there's a trend out there called native as a service, which is essentially running native software at the SaaS layer in the cloud. Yeah. Which is essentially just your data center app, put it on. That's what it sounds like Oracle's doing. Um, is it, and or, there seems to be a trend for people just to put stuff in the cloud from a cost perspective and a consumption standpoint to be native, not so much sassified per se, but just, I want to run my stuff in the cloud. What does that mean? Do you, are you even following this at all? Yeah, so that's, there's, there's a lot of different opportunities for that. So obviously the cloud offers a lot of different options. It offers everything from platform as a service, to infrastructure as a service, to software as a service. There's various degrees and tiers of that. Where we kind of see a lot of it going is we see that there's really becoming a shift in the overall IT management workforce. So we see this shift happening where now the, the traditional IT manager is kind of becoming that broker of different services. So their, their job's transitioning from managing a bunch of employees now to saying, okay, I'm going to understand the business a lot better and I'm going to see well, what's my best use case for a true public cloud. What are my best applications to go to a SaaS, maybe a Salesforce or a Workday? What are my best solutions that I'm going to take to a Secure24 type company that are my mission critical ERP systems that still need to have that greater de degree of compliancy? And I think there's enough demand out there for all of these different use cases. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Because so, seems it's a, it's a new kind of category, but you yeah, infrastructure as a service, commodity, platform, and then SaaS. Yep. Um, but, Doing in SaaS requires more of a DevOps philosophy. So, yeah. people just want to roll in their Windows apps in the cloud, for instance. Yeah. These are kind of new trends. So, I brought it up because we're watching it, Jeff. It's one of those things where, I mean, Oracle basically is saying, we'll put Oracle in the cloud. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. But no, okay, I, it went, yeah. right, it's Oracle in the cloud. It's not really cloud. It's, yeah. like, it's just Oracle running in some you know, service. Yeah. Right? It's nothing different than just putting a data center together. Absolutely, that's, that's the challenge I see a lot of IT managers facing today, is, is their job now is to understand what all these different cloud component pieces mean, and understand the pros and cons of these different solutions, and know, okay, for my business, what's going to bring more value to my business, right? If I'm talking about anything from uh, big data, big data analytics, if I'm talking about you know um, email solutions or collaboration solutions, 
what are the ones that are going to bring the most value to my business and where are the opportunities to run it in a, um, in a cloud such as you're talking about versus what auditing, compliance, security, availability, and all those understandings, they're really becoming more of that, that broker between the business and, and this, this plethora of different private, hybrid, public, you know, clouds that are available. And then they got to manage across all of them. Yep. <laughs> Which is... Uh... So yeah, putting together, manage, managing the service providers, holding them accountable, managing the SLAs, understanding the SLAs. And at the same time, where we see a lot of that value though is now they can actually, a lot of the, the CIOs and IT directors that we've talked to, they've spent so much time in the past managing the day-to-day -day, um, issues, challenges that came up, where now they, through outsourcing and through using some of these services, they can take more time to understand the business, sit down with the CFO, understand what's the most important thing to you, what's the most important thing driving your, your segment of the business, and how can we put the right technology solution in place that's going to add more value. So you're seeing a lot of customers are pretty well down the road in terms of seeing this as a viable uh, adoption strategy and, and really now moving into the business partner implementation focus and, and really optimizing around the, uh, the options that are available. And that's a big change we've seen over the last five years. Because five years ago, it was a lot of trying to convince people that the cloud was secure, the cloud was safe, and again, an enterprise private cloud, right? There's obviously different degrees of it. What we've seen is that transition happen where a lot, a lot of people are understanding now, okay, there's been a lot of uh, uh, adoption of this already. We fundamentally, you know, assuming you meet all the auditing compliances, the checklists, we're gonna, we trust you. Now it's more of a matter of how do I, how do I get there? And how do I get there and make sure, making sure I'm delivering the, the right value to the business? And is it because they've had success kind of on the low hanging fruit on the early workloads that they put to the cloud that their trust and, and comfort has gone up? Or was there some other event that suddenly blessed it as being a, a viable alternative for some of these you know, kind of more sensitive applications? You know, fundamentally, it's, it's not always success that has driven it. We've also seen um, learning opportunities through failures where they say, okay, I went in here into this opportunity and here's the things that worked, here's the things that didn't work, and what we have now is a more educated consumer, and this is actually helping us a lot because we can sit down with them and say, okay, well here's, from a customer service perspective, from a service delivery perspective, we can still meet all those requirements, but some of those challenges maybe you had before, we can also address those and make sure we're putting the appropriate SLA measures in place and application um, uh, delivery met methods in place. Okay. So we're seeing maybe a more educated consumer now. Sean, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. I want to get the final word in. Share with the folks out there, what is the most important thing happening at the show today, this week? In your opinion, technically and or on the business front? Technically or on the business front? That's or both. A, that, that is a great question. Uh, I think it's great that Larry's bringing up security. I think it's a great, uh, great message. I think it's a great uh, point of focus and something we should always continue to focus on. And he uses the word, it's hard to do. Yeah. And it's really hard. Okay, Sean Donaldson here inside theCUBE. We are live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2014. It's theCUBE. Stay with us. We'll be back after this short break with our next guest live here inside the Cisco booth on the floor, on the ground. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back.